definitely did not see this coming. Tamian continues to keep me interested. It just felt like it could have been a backstory of one of these characters in another book. I'm actually more interested to finish A Nice House on the Lake now after finishing The Closet. Welcome everybody. Today we are going to be breaking down James Tinian's The Closet. Only a three issue this time. A nice little short story, I guess you could say. Loves blending that horror with a crazy storyline and you never know what's going on until I guess the very last issue in this term. So getting into James Tinian, um, he's done so much stuff. None of the stuff that I've read has been like this. So it was definitely kind of threw me for a curveball. I was expecting some straightforward story of just like, here's some good guys, here's some bad guys, go go do the thing. But uh, well, I felt like we got like a piece of literature instead. Well, especially when you talk about a guy who spent, you know, most of his career writing things like Batman. And so I, I actually read that um, Batman Eternal. It was uh, over 50 issues, but that was excellent Batman. That's how I got introduced to Tinian. Then I followed him into the um, his newer series of Batman, which he just got off, and now Zdarsky's actually writing. Don't forget the Joker. Just finish up the Joker's run as well. That was also a great right. little great little fifteen issue series. That was a nice little ride into James Gordon and so right Joker. in the depths of his mind. But when you think about it, he does really like to plunge deep into these characters' minds and what's going through, yeah. and and it's a lot more a lot more emotional character building than just straight up action and horror like even when you go to you know a nice house on the lake it's almost the same thing like he's he breaks down each issue a specific character yeah. and goes into their psyche and, and like, what yeah. they're about and what you know where they came from and all this so he really likes to build up these characters so the crazy thing about this book to me is this felt like it could have been a backstory of one of these characters in another book it felt like this could have been like you know if he had thrown in a bad guy in batman this could have been like why the guy became bad you know or like it just yeah. it felt written in that way it didn't feel like tinian it just did it just wasn't exactly the same so moving in to book number one so we basically start the story uh straight to a bar <laughs> cheers tinian <laughs> we meet tom or as i like to sometimes say thom <laughs> <laughs> he and his family are moving to portland his wife maggie got a job there he has a son jamie stressful time moving cross country i believe they're in new york pretty much venting to a bartender about it through this we also learned that his son jamie has been having uh fears of this monster in his closet and going about how how he can handle this but when they finally set up the story of like basically the background as you're getting out of the bar it's really crazy here in these panels um there's not really a lot going on like look at no words i love that part you've got him in his bed and you've got the closet that's super scary and there's like a monster in there and uh jesus tom really so it's really just setting up like the you know the kid he's looking at the closet he's super scared of the closet and the only frame of anything here is his parents fighting Right, which we learn is very important part of the whole story. The kid is in the middle. There's maybe Tom sucks. What do we yeah, think about Tom, Tom definitely sucks, and the wife is more of the. Uh, the I mean, I guess you could almost say forgiving because she's still with him, and they're about to move across country, while they're having. Uh, while she knows he's basically having type of affair. We don't know to what extent. So yes, we see the closet from the perspective of the child and there's definitely something coming out of it. It kind of looks like a black alien creature of some sort. Oh yeah, after the fight. Now this is where we start getting the, what the hell's going on here. Very and slow start. reveal from the closet with the light shining. It's a really great shot. And that was um, good nightmare fuel. There's a shot of him, how the monster goes behind the bed like the door moves the, oh you see, yeah that's kind of weird why is like i that jumped out to me where yeah there's a shot of him going through the door but it's behind the bed so clearly at that it's like all right well it's not, not on the wall behind them is that happening in his mind why is that happening in his mind so you see this, it's this obviously not real like that's not where the door is right in the bed. yeah so the things i wouldn't have thought at like first read going through it i didn't notice or care it was just kind of weird and i was like you know what the heck is that about and you've got oh look at this page it's the boxes right boxes what are the boxes but there's no door there that's what i noticed like that's almost where the closet was 
But like as the first read through, you don't know. You're just like, what's going on there? You have some boxes in the door. That one, of my, one of my favorite lines from uh, that was when the mother does, mother's comforting him, and and the father just loves to keep saying, you know, we're we're gonna move away from here. All yeah. our problems will be left. You know, like you don't have to worry about this closet ever again. And the child says he's coming too. Like the kid knew from the first issue that like this is not just leaving us. This is There's something some foreshadowing that, there. There's some foreshadowing. foreshadowing, like a huge, like like looking back, like that's one of the best lines in the book where it's like you're, yeah. we're, you just you can't escape this. This is this is something yeah. that's coming with us. Nope, it's coming with us. Yeah, it's so smart. We can't we can't leave the the problems behind. But uh, at this point in time, we don't know their problems. Bro. There is a chance. That that them leaving for Portland the next day, all their problems will be gone. The but, alien will be gone. But obviously not because there's still two issues left. Yeah. <laughs> Quick reference, issue one. Do we ever figure out these – do we know from the first issue what these uh, symbols mean or any cool. any any hints in there what they are? If anybody reads this and knows what's going on with these uh, symbols here, uh, let us know. Because that's yeah. not cool. This is way too important because it's sprinkled throughout, like That's just true. just the page with just those symbols. So getting into issue number two. So if issue number one was like the problems at home. Issue number two is like getting away from the problems. This is a really, this is kind of cool. cool. Like just just the, the, I believe it's just the opening of the closet. Like that's just supposed to be yeah. the light inside. The same image as the one of the last pages that you'd mentioned, the uh, closet behind them. Yeah, you know, the closet over top, like the, the closets over top of the bed, the closets over top of the house. I hope that Tinian's life is amazing and his parents are amazing. And this is a story about some people that he knew that sucked. So this is the road trip issue, issue number two. This is them trying to leave their problems right where they were. Let's leave the problems at the old house in that closet. We're going to go on a road trip. We're going to go on a road trip. We're starting fresh. We want to make new memories. But right from the very first page we realize that it's not going well he's apologizing to the kid in the very first page which we find out that he's yelling at him again for complaining about the monster in the closet <laughs> so right away you can't leave your problems behind they're already in the car the kid's it, already complaining and he's just still so here he's still kind of worried so aggravated that that it's like just like it should be easy it, it should be gone our problems are gone we're leaving i don't get it and this is kind of like the ultimate flaw of Tom. And and as we learn, like he just he just can't get anything right. Yeah. So they're 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 driving cross country to for him to meet up with a friend's house. We find out that he's three hours late. He forgets, <laughs> he forgets his kid's bag, toothbrush. He has no anything. They ate before his friend, and the friend waited for him. So now the friend's kind of ticked off that they that he's waited three hours and they're not eating with him. So we kind of learned all these flaws that uh, Tom has, like yeah. right away. We meet Mac, and Mac Mac isn't even the kind of friend that's just like not saying anything and minding his own business. Oh no! As, as soon as Tom pulls up with his kid, he's on his case about sucking. You truly have to suck if you're friends. The second they oh, see yeah. you, they're like, "What's up, dude?" Yeah, <laughs> like, dude. He called him out immediately on forgetting his kid's bag, and he doesn't even have kids. Right, He's like, geez, dude, or like, you really screwed. But he wasn't even like, oh, you forgot your kid's bag. That's so unlike you. He was like, you know, like, oh, you don't have a toothbrush, do you? You're three hours late. You guys ate well, some bullshit, didn't he's you? Like, well, I guess we're going to Walmart. And the, yeah. and the and the father goes, no, no, it's okay. He can skip a night, right, buddy? And the kid's like, yeah, cool. It's like, okay, right. this buddy okay. Mac has more responsibility than uh, Tom does. Knows how to actually take care of a kid better. Yeah, and by the way, he says many times throughout this, don't tell mom. <laughs> he knows he's in the wrong most of the time. I don't have kids currently, but I think that uh, one of those things I need to remember for this story is if I find myself saying, don't tell mom, like more than just jokingly or like, you know, often like not a here and there thing, like things are probably not good. I probably to telling. I need to take a look at life. If you're asking a child to cover up. Yeah that you've done that's probably a warning sign don't tell mom it's interesting that his um his friends kind of like you know i relate to this thing well he sounds like a very free-spirited guy he talks about how him and his wife like they'll they, they smoke pot play with legos he watches cartoons legos for the kid ready for him right he has all the legos and tom is kind of he's like super jealous he he really like wants a different lifestyle he 
he says, I can never do this. My wife would never let me. So he, he definitely has this um, jealousy and resentment. He resents his wife. He, he has resentment for his wife, like just holding him back. He, he considers that she's holding him back. Well, would you ever correct a friend on their uh, lifestyle slash child? I've definitely felt more like Mac in this story than the, the, the main character, Tom. Because, yeah, if you had a friend come over and he sucked with his kid, maybe at first it would be easy to, like, bite your tongue. But, like, they know each other pretty well. So he's like, dude, get your shit together. You know, yeah. if you're so jealous, you could live like this, too. Like, why don't you live a carefree life? You know, like, why don't you live a life with no resentment? This is deep, man. I right. Really, uh, well, 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 Mac even says, he goes, no, no, no. It's not about my wife allowing me to do these. I do that with her. This is a yeah. group activity. Like we, yeah. Yeah. Like we, we enjoy doing this together. Tom admits that he's doing this cross country trip to get a break from his wife. Like yeah. his wife flew to Portland to start her job, and he was thinking that this could be a good moment to be away from his wife. So right there, you know, like he's so resentful that he that he wants to spend days in a car rather than hours in a flight right. then, then just starting a life so so he keeps talking about starting a new life but he is postponing it as long as possible yeah it was good to see mac after seeing such a wreck of uh of tom yeah mac actually has a very interesting line where again he calls out tom and says i think you're upset she didn't leave yeah like, right he calls him straight right. out and like i think you're more like having resentment because your wife stayed mm -hmm. with you like he thought he was going to have an easy out and she went through the therapy and forgave him and is trying to make it work. And Tom yeah. is more <laughs> upset. That's right. He was like, oh man, like this, this is still, this is still going. We eventually learned that he was having an affair with this woman, Megan, and they were doing, li doing simple little things like mixtapes. And he's kind of reminiscing and how they impress each other with simple ways and like the puppy dog love and, and that's when Mac goes, all right, it's time to go to bed. You're starting, you're starting yeah. to say dumb drunk things. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't, like, want to hear it. he doesn't even want to hear it because he just knows like, dude, you've got a kid, dude. You've got a family. Like what the fuck, dude? Yep. Yep. He's just like, yep, done. And by the way, we should probably mention the fact that as this is happening, what is, what is going on in Jamie's room? The yeah, crazy you're right is dropping from a door in the ceiling this creature's like doing a mission impossible down on, <laughs> on top of him which is really creepy he's basically floating down the kid takes really off creepy. running is at the door pounding like let me out of here and then the last shot of the book he's dragging him by his ass dragging him back <laughs> like dragging him back even though they're even though they've traveled so far to get away so, so when I first read through this, I'm reading, and uh, you see this alien thing, and that's when you're like, oh, my God. It, it follows. It's the creepiest thing. It's Man, they really did draw a really creepy bad yeah. down here. I honestly thought that at the beginning of issue three that the kid was going to be missing because he was going to be – 100%. You know, we watch him get murdered, basically. And yeah, we, we, we see the kid get uh, – he's being dragged off. Yeah, like, okay, that's it for him. He's murdered, and they didn't yeah. even hear it happen. And then going into issue three, we right away can see some similarities between this creature in the closet and Tom, Daddy Tom. And Thom. Thom or Thom. Maybe that's what the uh, creature's name is. The creature's name is Thom and his name's Tom. <laughs> three is basically going to start. He's sitting at a motel. He he's, he's has a, like a 12-pack of beers on the car. He's smoking. He's distraught. I'm thinking... Oh my God, the kid it definitely is missing. And then we find out he's actually upset because Jamie is still having these monster visions and he is actually more annoyed than it happened. Well, because now he knows they're on their way to move away. Question here, if you've got a kid that's seeing ghosts so bad that you want to move, wouldn't you test run maybe like uh, renting a, a hotel first to like see if it's better somewhere else? Don't forget the mother wanted him to uh, go to therapy, so... <laughs> Right. She, oh, did, she did keep asking Tom, like he needs to see a psychologist. Like we, yeah. we need, we need to get, and he just kept putting it off, kept putting it off. And, and yeah. here we are now. Uh, it's, really, it's really just a state. We're in the wrong state. That's what it is. Yeah. So now kind of weird here, I, another weird one um, that kind of just shows that Tom sucks. This guy comes up and asks, uh, can I bum one of those off of you? And he gives him a cigarette. 
he immediately starts complaining about his family. Like, my kid is afraid of this monster. I yelled at him. And then he starts talking, complaining about his wife at the same time. You know, how his wife is telling him and he's not interested enough in her life and he doesn't ask the right questions. So he's immediately already back into the world of like marriage trouble, even though he's not even he's not even with her. And he's, he's already back, back super resentful. And he's pissed yeah. about the kid. He's on a cross country trip with his son and he's still venting and complaining about his wife and how he can't do anything right. In this conversation with this gentleman at his car, that is when we officially find out that he was having an affair. Yeah. He would take the kid to the park and he met this other woman. Somebody else's. And eventually an affair started. And he even said, he goes, look, I, I was just more interested in the fact that someone younger than me would be interested in me. Yeah. He was happy so, that somebody was paying him attention. Yeah. We find out that she was exchanging Polaroid pictures. Yeah. So I guess this was <laughs> sexting back in the day. Oh. So they're sort of sexting, but who knows? We don't really get to see the pictures. We, we see one and he's holding the middle finger or something. Yeah. But these Polaroids, for some reason, he thinks it's smart to keep them in his kid's closet. Yep. And that's the big, big turning point. He keeps all of this stuff, the mixtapes, yep. pictures. Where will my wife never look? Oh, my wife I, will never look. the corner of my kid's closet. And then he admits of him sneaking in there at yeah. night while this kid is sleeping to look at it, which if you think about it, like That's we cool. really lose almost all respect for Tom at this point, don't we? He's in the next room and he's, he's fantasizing or we don't know what kind of fantasizing, but he's like, you know, he's looking at these pictures. He's in there. He thinks he's going to get away with it because his wife's never going to look there. But that's when Jamie wakes up with his father in the closet and we yep. see this outline that is that looks exactly like the creature that Jamie keeps seeing every night and screaming, having a fit. And of course the father doesn't want the wife to find out he was in the closets. Oh no, no, no. You, you were just having a nightmare. You were just having a nightmare. And the fool leaves the box open with the light on wife comes in to see why the child's screaming and sees the box open. Boom, right there. That's where that's where it all starts going wrong, right? I mean, that's that's basically the turning point of the whole family. Yeah, I think that's that was the first time that the monsters started. The birth of the monster, the birth of the anxiety, the birth of problems in the relationship, everything. Everything started then. Like mom and dad yelling and screaming at each other, me seeing this creature in the closet, nothing ever being right again all started there. And the cover just being half of the monster, half his dad. I mean, if you need anything else to let you know that, like, yeah, this is a metaphor that is that, that, uh, you know, maybe not that his dad's the monster. Well, maybe, maybe it is his dad's the monster. But, it's uh, not the metaphor of that, but I think it's too, like, just, just the problems that arose yeah. from dad as well. The tension of the marriage, because, like, the kid knows they're screaming at each other all the time. When they do finally get to Portland, and, oh, all our troubles are behind us. Oh, go see your room. It's upstairs. And immediately yep. get into an argument. And you see the shot from up in the stairs of the kid viewing all this. Yep. Goes into the bedroom. And once again, uh, the uh, starts moving, and it's just, yeah. There's the you, got those, you got those same panels of just hearing the kid. The kid can hear his parents arguing while he's like looking at the closet. Yeah, it's all it, it's it's just all the, ties back to the first issue of the of looking at the closet while the parents are arguing. Yeah, there's also a great line where where the where the, in issue three where the father says things are going to be different here, Jamie. <laughs> like oh. like Tom, Tom is so convinced that this fresh start, everything's going to be different, and we learn that your problems follow you. Yeah. Like if you don't fix your problems or you don't. Yeah, you got to find what the cause is. You got to figure out what's going on. If you don't accept them or figure them out, like they're going to they're gonna come right with you. You can go anywhere, but you will always be there. You know, if you don't work through a thing, it stays there. Yeah. And that's right there. There's no such thing as a fresh start. If you don't fix your problems, they're going to follow you. The writer was just there, like, just totally like, if you didn't, if you didn't get it yet, I'm just going to spell it out here. Closing thoughts. Uh, we definitely did not see this coming. I, I, I definitely didn't. Maybe it was more because Tinian is such a horror writer and they, he fooled us with all these 
great images, but once issue three started and we found all this information, wow. the marriage and the affair, and it just started making sense and the clot. And then you realize this is just, it's not an alien monster story. This is repressed, horrible feelings, memories, fears, all becoming part of this kid's life. Making, giving, giving your life a monster. Right now we're reading Nice House on the Lake and that is amazing. Do you think a nice house on the lake is going to have some sort of twist like this? What are we going to find out about Walter? Like, I'm actually more interested to finish a nice house on the lake now after finishing the closet because of the way that this ended. I agree. I feel like now I'm not ready for what's going to happen in Nice House of the Lake. We might realize that they were never at a lake and this is just all symbolism for like having bad friends, <laughs> making sure that you keep people close to you that you like or something. Yeah, I, I might read it again and just be like, I don't know if I believe this. I don't know if I believe this. So thanks for hanging out with us and uh, listen to us talk about the closet. We really liked it. Stick around, like, and subscribe our stuff. Check out our other videos. We do a video series called Get to the Shopper where we check out New Jersey comic book shops and show you the differences between them and uh, why they're all so great. You should visit them all. We also do a, a con experience video too. We've done a few cons so far. We were at the Garden State Comic Fest. Monster Mania. Monster Mania, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun. That's coming up and hope you guys check that out as well.